from St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm always interested in stories that have to do with challenging status quo. How do people learn uh, about power? What is objective or neutral? And I will never turn down a spicy snack. I love food. Um, And I think that food is often a way into communing and to talking about experience. So if it has to do with food, I'm almost 100% of the time in. I'm Alex Hoyer. Since July, this show has been without a regular host. Former host Sarah Fenske took a new job over the summer as executive editor of Euclid Media Group. She oversees the operations of eight newspapers, including the Riverfront Times here in St. Louis. And yes, Sarah's been back to guest host a time or two, but we are tremendously excited that a new host will fill this seat starting tomorrow. St. Louis Public Radio announced earlier this fall that Elaine Cha is the new host of St. Louis on the Air. Elaine Cha, in every sense of the phrase, welcome to the show. Thank you so very much. (laughs) How are you feeling? Uh, I am feeling excited and expectant. Um, A little freaked out, but in a good way. It means that I, I care about what happens and... Uh, I'm just really happy and grateful to be here. You most recently came from Big Brothers Big Sisters. For nearly five years, you were the nonprofit's founding storyteller and journalist, and then most recently the senior manager of external communications. Before that, you did work for the Ferguson Commission, and you have media experience as a producer for 9PBS here in St. Louis and at KPCC, the public radio station in Southern California. Why do you want to do this job as host of St. Louis on the Air? So I've been in St. Louis now since mid-2014. And I've really wanted to find a way to have conversations with as many people as possible to, uh, to glean a better understanding of what it means to live here um, and to live here fully. And... I think that um, working as the the host producer for this show and with St. Louis Public Radio offers an opportunity to be very generous in the way we activate community and to utilize this show, which is a very unique thing, um, to to really expand upon what it means to be um, in conversation with one another. Um, I'm looking forward to St. Louis on the Air becoming a place where more and more people feel that they are welcome and that their experiences, their opinions, um, anecdotes about things that they have gone through both here and elsewhere can be part of Um, expanding on uh, a sense of community that people feel not only when they're listening, but when they are out in the St. Louis region, as well as places like Quincy and Rolla, where I've never been, but I fully intend to go and explore. Uh, You're talking about this aspect of community. Your cover letter for this job reads, I want to collaborate closely with a team to produce an experience, not just a weekday hour, that makes the program feel like a home for a vast array of people in our region, especially the unreached, the invisible, and the minority. What's an example, uh, a a concrete example of the kind of coverage um, that would help you realize this vision? One of the things that I have always enjoyed doing is going out to places Um, When I was working with the Ferguson Commission, one of the things I made it a point to do was to take surface streets to get to each of the the large public meetings. 
And that was a way for me to understand um, what the, this region looks like, um, not just by looking at maps, not just by taking the shortest route, but taking those surface streets to see what the texture of St. Louis is and where people live, sort of beyond St. Louis and the Arch, for example. One of the things that uh, can happen with any kind of media is that when its home base happens to be in one place, that everything needs to center around that physical location and that we want to, we meaning those in media, often want community members sort of writ large to come to us rather than it's being our going out to them. Creating content and conduits in a really active sense. Is there an example of a person, a topic, uh, an idea that you just have a have an itch for? So something that I would love to explore, I would love to learn how young people, very young people, how they come to understand what it means to vote, to talk with younger people about their ideas, about what they feel um, empowered to change and empowered to do, and to sort of break apart um, some of our ideas, maybe, about um, very common questions we ask, like, when was the first time you voted? Mm. Mm -hmm. So how do people learn uh, about power? And what does it mean in very specific circumstances that then have an effect on sort of more macro level issues? Mm. You talked about your work for the Ferguson Commission. And uh, of course, the Ferguson Commission stems from August of 2014 when a Ferguson police officer uh, shot and killed Michael Brown. You had arrived in St. Louis just before that. How has that shaped you and how you might view this role? So when I arrived in St. Louis, it was June of 2014. And I had already come in with some understanding of racial issues that historically have um, not just been sticky ones, but ones that uh, people sometimes were not talking about in very explicit terms. Like what? Um, that race makes a difference in people's everyday experiences and in the outcomes of their lives. Um, when the protests began, the uprising began, I was able to be part of and absorb what was happening as someone trusted in a different way. Number one, because I was a relative newcomer. Number two, because I was not part of a media outlet. And number three, because I'm neither black nor white. So if it had not happened, if I'd not arrived at that time, I don't think that I would be sitting here and I don't think that my desire to cultivate community in a very intentional way would be the same. I'm not saying that it wouldn't exist, but those circumstances surrounding when I arrived and what I have been welcome to be part of uh, is very much a function of, of what happened in August 2014 and all the stuff beforehand, as well as after, that either has not been addressed head on or that I've seen people talk about much more openly and frankly. Hmm. Over the summer, we took a bit of a broadcast break on this show. Um, and one of the highlights of that time was holding community listening sessions. You were at one of those community I was listening indeed. sessions. Um, what is the role that you think the community... Um, and our listeners should have in shaping this show? Well, I think it's called St. Louis Public Radio for That's a right. reason. Yes. 
and that having those kinds of sessions is a way for us as content makers to partner with community members to listen to what they have to say about what's important to them and what they want to hear more of. Uh, journalism as a an industry, I think, is very much in the midst of change as well. It is a legacy. There are certain notions that we've had about what is objective or neutral, and that there have been challenges to that um, in very healthy ways, and that um, doing community listening sessions like that um, and doing what we can to to marry what we know with what we don't and to produce really compelling, um, warm, and welcoming and challenging um, content. I completely agree with you. Uh, this is a this is a very collaborative team. You've been here for a few weeks. We we didn't uh, just throw you onto the air on your first day or your first week. Uh, what are the ideas when pitched that might get a very quick green light from you? I love food, um, and I think that food is often a way into communing and to talking about experience. So if it has to do with food, I'm almost 100% of the time in. Um, Arts and culture, that is an interest of mine as well. I had mentioned earlier that when I first came to St. Louis, I dove right into community events. And the arts were something that I uh, I took full advantage of. I'm always interested in stories that have to do with challenging status quo. Um, You know, it's it's also very easy to say, like, you know, the blank community without recognizing that there are intricacies and nuances within what we might think of as being a single community. Um, And by doing that, we miss out on learning some really important things. What comes to mind? Um, so I am someone who would be ascribed uh, Asian American. And I am East Asian, yes, I'm of Korean descent. But I'm not American. You were I born live, in Canada. Yes, I was. And people will hear that in some of the, the <laughs> words that I say. <laughs> and not just born there, but went to grade school there, uh, spent a significant amount of time yes. there. Yes. Uh, I moved to Southern California when I was in high school. So the you in my color and favorite uh, is something that still has to be taken out in editing, and I stubbornly refuse to give that you up. As you know, Elaine, trivia nights are a big deal in St. Louis. Uh, Let's pretend that one of the categories is all about Elaine Cha. What might be one or two tidbits about you that would help in that category? Use of language is certainly one of them. And I enunciate even when I'm using what we call at home, home language or adult language. That would be one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never turn down a spicy snack. And when I was a kid, my dream was to be a professional tennis player. Do you play tennis? Um, In my mind. All right. Yes. (laughs) It's been a long time. Well, Elaine Cha, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Today's episode was produced by Alex Hoyer, with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. Our executive producer is Alex. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group.
Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations and leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.